when she drinks against your lips, I pop! And John her with her dewlap, pour the ale. The lies is done, telling the saddest tale. Sometime, her three-foot stool mistake of me. Then I slip from her bum, down topples she, and Taylor cries and falls into a cuff. And the whole choir hold their hips and laugh and wax in their mirth and knees and swear a merrier hour was never wasted there. Sun's parching heat displayed my cheeks God's mother deigned to appear on me. And in a vision full of majesty willed me to leave my base vocation and free my country from calamity. Her age she promised and assured success and complete glory. She revealed herself. And whereas I was black and swart before with those clear rays which she infused on me, ask me a question thou canst possible, and I will answer unpremeditated. My courage, try my combat to thou darest, and thou shalt find that I exceed my sex. Resolve on this, thou shalt be fortunate, if thou receive me for thy warlike. When you durst do it, then you were a man, and to be more a man than what you were you would be so much more than a man. For time, no place to thy cure, yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and their fitness now doth unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, with the smile in my face, have plucked my never from bowl of gums, and dashed its brains out, had I so sworn to you, as you have done this. My, my zeal to Valentine is cold, and I love him not as I was one to I love this lady too, too much. And that is the reason that I love him so little. How shall I dote on her with more advice, that thus, without advice, he begin to love her? Tis but a picture I've yet beheld that hath dazzled my reason's life, but when I look on her perfections, there is no reason but I shall be blind. And if I could check my erring love, I will. If not, to compass her, I'll use my skill. To yours to be directed, as from her lord, her governor, her king, myself and what is mine to you and yours is now converted. But now I was the lord of this fair mansion, master of these servants, queen over myself, and even now, but now, this house, these servants, and the same myself, are yours, my lords. I give them with this ring. Which one you part from, lose or give away. Let it presage the ruin of your love, and be my vanish to exclaim on you. I trust, I may not trust thee, for thy word is but the vain breath of a common man. Believe me, I do not believe thee, man. I have a king's oath to the contrary. Thou shalt be punished for thus frightening me, for I am sick and capable of fears, oppressed with wrongs and therefore full of fears. A widow, husbandless, subject to fears. A woman naturally born to fears, and though thou now confess, thou didst but jest. With my vexed spirits, I cannot take a truce. But they will quake and tremble all this day. Ah, oh, do not tear thyself away from me. How dearly would it touch thee to the quick, shouldst thou be here that I were licentious, and that this body Consecrate to thee by ruffian lust should be contaminate. I am possessed with an adulterate blot. My blood is mingled with the crime of lust. For if we two be one, and thou plays false, I do digest the poison of thy flesh being trumpeted by thy contagion. For behold me, a fellow of the royal bed, which owe a moiety of the throne, a great king's daughter, the mother to a hopeful prince for life. I prize it as I weigh grief, for honor and only that I stand for. I appeal to your own conscience, sir. Before Polixenes came to your court, how I was in your grace, how merited to be so. Since he came with what encounter so uncurrent, I have strained to appear thus. Clarence is come, false, fleeting, Perjured Clarence that stab me in a field by Sewksbury. Seize on him, furies. Take him unto your torments. And with that, methought a legion of foul fiends environed about me, and in my ears screamed such hideous cries that with the very noise I'm trembling wait. And for a season after, could not believe but that I was in hell. I 
rising, so again, when I shall meet him in the court of heaven, I shall not know him, therefore never, never must I behold my pretty Arthur more grief fills the room up of my absent child then. Have I reason to be fond of grief? Fare you well. Had you such a loss as I, I could give better comfort than you do. I will not keep this form upon my head when there is such disorder in my wit. Oh, Lord. My boy. In faith, I do not love thee with mine eyes, for they in thee a thousand errors know. But it is my heart that loves what they despise, who in despite of you is pleased to dote. Nor are mine ears with thy tongue's tune delighted, nor tender feeling to base touches prone, nor taste nor smell desires to be invited to any sensual feast with thee alone. <coughs> but my five wits nor my five senses can dissuade one foolish heart from serving thee who leaves unswayed the likeliness of a woman. Edward, thy son, which now is Prince of Wales. For Edward, my son, which was Prince of Wales, thy in his youth by like untimely violence. Thyself a queen, for me that was a queen, outlive thy glory like thy wretched self. Long mayest thou live to wail thy children's loss. Long live thy happy days to wail thy children's death. And after? Many lengthened hours of grief die, neither mother, wife, nor England's queen. When to the sessions of sweet silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past. I sigh the lack of many things I sought, and with old woes and wails my dear time's waste. Then can I drown in eyes that used to flow, the precious friends hidden death stateless night. Weep the fresh love long since camps with woe, and moan the expense of a many a vanished sight. Then I can grieve, and grievances forgone, and heavily from woe to woe tell o'er the sad account of a poor bemoaning moan, which I may pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. Love is too young to know what conscience is, yet who knows not conscience is born of love, and gentle cheater urge not by a miss, lest guilty of my faults thy sweet self prove. For thou betraying me, I do betray my nobler parts to my gross body's treason. My soul doth tell my body that he may triumph in love. <laughs> Flesh stains no farther reason, but when rising at thy name, point to thee as his triumphant prize. Proud of this prize, he is content to thy poor drudge to be, to stand in thy affairs and fall by thy side. No want of conscience hold that I call her love, whose dear love I prize. The day before, she broke her brow, and my husband, God do with soul, was a merry lad. He took up the child. Ye, quoth he, dost thou fall on thy face? If thou wilt fall backwards when thou hast more wit, wilt thou duel? And by my holiday, the pretty little wench left crying and said, I, ha, ha, oh, see now how much I should come about I born. I should not live a thousand years, and I should never forget it. Wilt thou duel, quoth he, and pretty fool instinct and said, I, oh, Oh. <laughs> Peace I have done. God mark thee to his grace. That was the prettiest babe I had ever known.